Thank you, Raina. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. My name is Leibella Ralston, and it's another fun Wednesday with Faber Castell USA and Michael Stores. And we want to thank everybody for joining us today. And um, I see someone is from Southwest Ohio. Hello. I am broadcasting live from Northwest Arkansas area. It's been gray and gloomy all day. <laughs> and so it feels so relaxing. I think it's a perfect day to create create and play and um, be creative. So today's class, we are going to be working with some Faber-Castell gelatos. And so if you are, this is your first time attending our class, we have a lot of our previous classes that you can watch. Um, it's available on Michael's YouTube channel. So we do have some past classes in there that are super fun as well. So I highly suggest checking out some of those. But today's class will be doing a journaling spread. I think it's perfect just, you know, to relax, to kind of like, I love journaling so much because it gives me a moment to settle and really take out everything that's like occupying my mind and just to kind of calm down after a busy work day or even during the weekends. It's a perfect me time. So if you don't have a sketchbook or a journal, I really highly suggest keeping one, whether it's just for little doodles here and there or just for writing. I think it's nice to keep one. It's, it's really, I mean, personally, I love it. It works well for me. So maybe this class will inspire you to keep one yourself. All right. So like what I was saying, we're going to be working with some Faber-Castell gelatos. And I will also be using my Artist Loft. This one's from Michaels. This is a watercolor, a mixed media pad. Um, I'm also going to be using some pencil just for our lettering that we're going to do today. I am using my favorite kneadable eraser. I also have my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens. One is in big brush uh, and this one is just the brush tip. So both in black because that's what we're going to use later. If you have like other tips that you like to use, maybe you like to use a 1.5, that works well as well. I also have a water brush in here. I might not end up using it, but just in case. I also picked up some blending brush from Michaels. So this one is the smaller size. It came with, a, I think, three sizes in the pack or two. But this one is the small one. Um, I have a bottle <laughs> mist here. So just a water. Spray some water later for moisture to blend our gelatos. And I also have some baby wipes in here. This is what we're going to use to blend the gelatos in our journal. All right. So if you have any questions for today, I'm going to try my hardest to look at the chat. But Miss Jennifer, also from Faber Castell, is here to help me with some of the questions that you might have. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the gelatos. The gelatos are water soluble creamy pigment sticks. I just love using them. I'm going to go flip through our pages here so I can show you. This one is Gelato's Blended. I'm going to zoom in. Oops, I zoomed out backwards. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So when we're working with Gelato's, again, these are water soluble. It means you can blend it with water, you can manipulate it with water, um, but you can also use them um, without water, just using your fingers, smudging them, because we all have like this oil and moisture from our fingers, and you can use that to blend your gelato. So they're kind of like, um, they're like lipstick. It's so creamy. It's so blendable. And so you can blend two colors together in here. You can apply them directly in your page like this and then smudge. And of course, when you're not using water, you're really getting that pure pigment in there, right? Because once we apply some water, we're diluting it with water. And so you lose a little bit of that opacity from the gelatos. And I'm going to use just a mist in here. We're going to use that to blend. So there's like pros and cons with everything. It's going to easily blend with water, but you might lose a little bit of that opacity 
So I think when that happens, I like to just add more gelatos as I go along. So if I need more pink, then I still have this little bit of wet finger by, and then I'll pick up some of the pigments and then you can blend, you know, so those are things you can also pick up using your water brush, just like this. It's kind of like using some watercolors as well. And then you can do that, but look at the difference from direct application when blended with water and then picking up from your stick. I mean, you have three different colors. It's like using three different mediums in here, but you use just the same product. Isn't that amazing? So since this is a little wet from my water brush, let me apply it and look how opaque that is. I mean, that's super saturated. So let me blend it while it's still a little bit wet. And so see, that is super fun. Now, when I'm working with any medium that is water-based, you know, water-soluble, I always like to keep like a dirty rag in here so I can clean my fingers. I also love using my baby wipes, but I don't want to waste too much baby wipes. So I have just a rag and the water in here so I can clean my fingers as I go along. All right, so now I want to show you what it looks like if we're going to use some baby wipes to blend the gelatos. Because this is one of my favorite, quickest way to blend and play with the gelato. So it's not super messy. I don't have to deal with um, picking up water. So using the baby wipes are the easiest, easiest way for me. But when I'm using a baby wipes, notice my baby wipes right here. So I'm picking up some of those pigments. So that means I am taking out some of the saturation and the opacity because I pick up some of the pigments. So what you do is that when you start blending, you want to apply really light pressure. So you're not moving, you're not picking up so much of the pigment. You're basically just moving them so you can blend it. So you don't press on it too hard, just very lightly and then move it around like that. And so here we still have a little bit of that opacity, but I think you can't beat that direct application without water and just using the moisture and oil from your finger. But as you can see, it's very versatile. There's many different ways that you can use it. And that's why it's just becoming one of my favorite tools here in my craft room. Okay, so for today's class, we'll be using the colors bubble gum. We have lemon. I have lime. This one is the snow cone. This one is the raspberry. And this one is the boysenberry. So the gelatos, they are available individually, uh, open stock, but you can also purchase them in sets. And so there's like metallic colors, which is fabulous. It's beautiful. There's iridescent. There's also the bright set, the, the pastel colors, and also some translucent. So it comes in different types and kinds. And, you know, it's just fun to have all the sets because then you have the more the merrier. You can just keep playing around. Okay, so for today's class, we'll also be doing a little bit of lettering and a lettering and also playing with the gelatos to create our background. Now for this one, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna flip my notebook and instead of a portrait, I'm gonna make it a, a landscape or a horizontal here. So we have this one. And also this way, the spiral bound will not bother me because sometimes it bothers me when I'm doing lettering and it's there, but if it's on top, I can easily move things around. All right, so I wanna, I didn't show you, if you wanna use the blending brush, let's, let's go back into this one page so we can just see what it looks like if you use a blending brush for the gelatos. All right, so I'm gonna start with, let's use the raspberry color. I'm gonna apply it directly into my page, just like that. Also, when you're applying your gelatos, applying it into the page, try not to go full force also. Don't apply too much pressure. So I'm just gonna wet this brush, this blending brush like that. And then I'm going to just start blending. And if you want more control, I just learned this, you wanna put your pointer finger on top of this brush like this, and then this will give you enough control 
for the movement of your brush. So this one will give you kind of like an airbrush look, right? When you're using a brush like this. I wanna zoom in so you guys can see where the texture of the paper, you retain that texture. Let's try it with another color. I'm gonna moisten berry here, let's try that. And then let's, this time, instead of spraying water, I'm just gonna here, pick up the moisture from this baby wipes and then do this. So you can hold it like this or put your finger or put your pointer finger on top. Sometimes I like to do this too. Because if I'm just using the handle, I feel like it's, it's a little out of control sometimes. So when I want a precise blending and I want a better control, I just hold it on top like this. And I feel like I have better control. Did I just say I have better control? I keep repeating myself, huh? There. But as you can see, um, this one, we went in right away. When it was still wet, when the brush was still wet, we just applied the gelatos. It was a much cleaner blend. This one, because I was talking, and so I let it sit in there. The gelatos let it sit in there. We're going to see if it's still going to get picked up. Let's do one. So what if what we're doing right now is we're doing experiment together so we can learn fun ways that we can blend. I'm gonna blend this right away. And so we can see the difference. Cause I don't mind texture. I also actually love using texture in my drawings and my illustrations. But if you don't, that you want that smooth airbrush look, then the blending brush, I think you're gonna love it. All right now let's go blend this one. Oh look, it's still very, very smooth there. You can see that. Let's see. Ah, it's so pretty. I'm gonna try one more and just using my finger just so you guys can see the difference of what type of blending and the look. I feel like if you're not using any brush or anything like that, I feel like where you apply the stroke, it's, it's a little tougher. It's a little harder to move around the pigments if there's no, not enough moisture in your finger. So we're gonna do that again. And this time I'm really going to wet my finger like that. So this time, I feel like I have better control of moving those pigments around. So you really need that moisture. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys. All right, so moving along in our next page. All right, so what I was thinking in this spread, it's June, it's Pride Month. Um, I really wanna create some rainbows and rainbows really make me happy. And so we're going to create some rainbows in here. I know we're going to use pink instead of <laughs> red, but I love pink. And so that's going to be okay. So what we need to do is just basically no overthinking here. We're just going to create the rainbow and we're going to apply your gelatos one after the other, one color after the other. So let's going to start with pink. I want to cover this whole page with the rainbow color. So I'm gonna use the pink on top. Now you don't have to use the same colors. For example, hey, I want my rainbows to be different color. You know, by all means, please go ahead and use a different color. So I'm gonna use pink in here and I'm just gonna make a rainbow here. I'll start with a pink. This is the first color. I really want to cover the whole page, so. All right. And then I'm going to use, let's start with the baby wipes. I'm going to use the baby wipes to smudge and start smudging. Now it's going to be lighter, but it's okay because we can always add more color in here. And I just really want to create this first wash, first layer first. First layer first, first, first. <laughs> that was a lot of first. There. That's just the first layer. I'll add my orange or yellow. Actually, this one is the lemon, so it's yellow. And 
And I am, since I know I have limited space in here, I'm going on top of the pink just a little bit. Just analyze the amount of space you have left in your page. Maybe you're using a much smaller size than me or a much bigger one, then, you know, just kind of be mindful of that, right? So now I have my yellow. I'm picking up just areas where I don't have other colors, just a clean part of my baby wipes. And I'm just lightly going over this gelato's. I'll spread this one because I know I'm going to use this part right here for the green also. So they're going to overlap as well. I love creating journal pages like this where it doesn't require a whole lot of thinking, you know, just really having fun. Because I already have to use my brain for work and other tasks. So when I'm doing any type of creative projects, something easy and something just doesn't require a whole lot of thinking. All right, so that's the green. We're gonna repeat the same process, just picking up a clean part of my baby wipes and I'll start blending. And if you feel like you're not moving the pigments enough, maybe you need to switch and find a much um, moisture part of the gel of the, your baby wipes because sometimes they dry quickly also. All right. I love it already. Okay. This time we're going to use the blue. Like that. Okay. Another clean part. Um. Oh my gosh, I apologize. It's my, I am a little under the weather. So sometimes if you hear my microphone going in and out, <laughs> I'm trying to cough. So good thing I'm doing this virtually, right? <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna do, use my raspberry here. Just do that. Just like that. Right, let's start blending again. I think I did very well with spacing my rainbow. Sometimes it's kind of like, it feels so weird when they're too tight. I feel like this one is really spaced out just perfectly. See, I was a little too crazy over here. I have this overlapping that I don't like the shape figure something out there later. I think I covered too much of the blue. So I'm just gonna reapply my blue over here. Let's just go to the blue area. There we go. So when you're doing your blending, make sure that you're going in one direction also. So don't go vertical and then horizontal. So just kind of follow the shape of your rainbow like that. So you're, if you're doing a swish swash like this, then stick to that motion. All right, then my last color would be the boysenberry. I'll put it down here. If you don't blend the gelatos enough, we might have a little hard time applying our pit artist pen on top of it just because there's going to be a lot of that sticky residue so you want to make sure that they're really blended 
so that we can um, effortlessly use the pit artist pen on top. Okay, I'll find a clean area right here, and this time I'll be more careful with the overlap of the two colors. There we go. And again, just one direction, the swish wash. That one. <clears throat> Just like that. All right. It's looking good to me, but I feel like I want to add just a little bit more layers in here. So I want to play around. I think I'm going to use the blending brush for the next step. But I might not have to. I might just use my finger also, because remember, when we applied and blended with the gelatos using our finger, just a little bit moisture, there's it's more opaque and more saturated. So let's do this. Um, for, yeah, I see this question now. I'm sorry. Okay, so do you have to do a curve for the rainbow? You know what? You don't have to. If you want just kind of like a straight line, you can always do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. If you want it like straight line, I mean, if it's just the colors that we're creating. So I think that works well too. Um, Miss Jen, can, I think she can better answer that for certain temperature for the gelatos to be in. You know what, we've tested them under extreme temperatures and you really shouldn't have any restrictions with that. Okay. Any climate. That's true because in our house, I mean, you know, sometimes you have the heater on, sometimes then you have the AC on when it's summer. I never had trouble. And also, um, I think I received some of the questions on my YouTube channel when people were asking, well, my gelato is a little crumbly. Is it going to matter? To be honest with you, the crumbles are still pure pigments in there. So it might just need a little bit more, more moisture, but it still works the same, honestly. All right, so this time I just applied my gelatos. I'm going to use my finger to blend. Oh, look at that. It's more opaque. More colors in here. So yeah. Yeah, no, you don't have to do the curve. I'm so sorry. I just read that question. You can just do it straight or really fill the whole page. I mean, yeah, you can do that. Put in the whole page in the rainbow color. I think that would be pretty. And you know what, to be honest with you, I was just thinking that earlier. I'm like, oh, I have space in here and I have space in here. I should have just filled this whole area right here pink. And how about we do that? Who's stopping me? No one's going to stop me. So I'm going to go move, <laughs> move over the pink. So let's, let's fill this whole area right here pink. As long as we blend it. There, yeah. So what did you guys do? If you guys can turn on your camera, you can show me so I can just kind of see it. So Amy, oh, Amy. Did you, I kind of feel the whole page, huh? That looks so cool. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie said that she loves my art room. I do love it also. Let's look at all the areas. Look at all the fun stuff that we have going on in here. I know it's super fun. It's filled with a lot of Faber-Castell products in here. All right, so here we fill up all the pink on top. There. And then I think I'm gonna fill this one with a blue. So all these, the boysenberry, I'm just going to apply it here. Just like that. I'm gonna use my baby wipes this time to kind of match the first layer first because the first layer is a little softer. And so I wanna match that first. Just like that. I think that looks good. All right, then I'll add a little bit more lemon just so we can have more yellow on top. And then I'm playing around with my ways of how to blend this. So 
I'm going to use a blending brush this time. Just going to blend it. Ooh, more colors in there. And then I'll clean it up with the baby wipes and then apply the green. So if you want more opaque, more vibrant colors, then you can apply a second layer of your gelatos in here. And you can blend it with the baby wipes or use your finger for a more opaque effect in there. So you're adding more colors. You want more opacity. Bright and fun. <coughs> We want to celebrate this month with all these bright, fun colors of the rainbow. We go. And then we'll do a raspberry. I think the raspberry needs to really be blended because the pure pigment is a little too strong of a purple for me. When it's blended, it's like this perf perfect shade of purple that I love. But it's nice to, you know, know that you can add more, keep adding more layers to just add more colors. The vibrancy. This one. I'm just going to do this one in the curve. And I'll leave this part right here a little light. So just that. So I think this is blended enough that I don't have, I won't have any issues with our pit artist. And I feel like it. But just in case, I'm going to go over this area right here. I feel like this one could use a little bit more blending. So if you feel it and it feels a little rough and sticky, then it means that you have some of the gelatos in there, the residue are not blended enough. So you wanna make sure that you blend it with your finger or with the baby wipes. Or if you have this blending brush, that will work. But I feel like mine is really smooth and all blended. Look how fun that is. I mean, just that background alone, super fun already. Now for our lettering. Um, if you enjoy doing any type of creative lettering, like what I said, we have done many um, classes um, in the past and you can watch them on YouTube because we've done many types of different creative lettering in there that you can check out. But today's, um, but in today's project, we're going to do a, a kind of like a bubble balloon lettering type. And that's what we're going to use on top of this background, this rainbow. So we're going to do um, good vibes only. Now, if you're going to use a, a pencil, mechanical pencil, you might have a little hard time. Um, but we can actually just use our pit artists in here directly as well. So what we need to do is I need to show you first what you need to do with the letters. Just a quick one so you can see. And I'm trying to find piece of paper in here what we can use okay I have one here <clears throat> all right so for the technique for the bubble lettering is or the balloon lettering is that you want to do your first letter first for example for the g right the only tricky part here is um, the spacing after one letter after the other so instead of writing the whole word Maybe we should do one letter at a time so we can make sure that we have enough spacing in between. Because when we apply the gelato, sometimes it's hard to use pencil on top unless you're using like a, <clears throat> a really strong graphite pencil, which I think I might be able to grab some. Here. We can try that later, but first let's do this. So you have your first letter, right? Let me zoom in. So what we need to do is this is a sample. This is the skeleton of our letter. What we need to do is we need to add another stroke outside the letter G like this one stroke. This one, I'm gonna go add another right here. And so here, so left and right side. So the right side as well. 
I'm going to add there. And then we're going to enclose this part in and this part right here also. And then I'm going to go have that stroke inside. And then we start filling it in. And that's why I have the big brush because it's much easy to fill in areas with a bigger brush. And that's what I love using that for. And it's also more juicy. So more inks. So we have that little letter G, okay? So that's where we're gonna do good vibes only. Now you wanna be mindful of your space. For example, I know that there's three words, good, vibes only. Now it depends on how you want to position and compose your lettering. For example, if you want to follow the curve, perhaps of your rainbow, say go good times in here, and then put the only in here. So you kind of like your eyes are going down, or you don't want to follow the curve and you just want to use the middle part of your, your notebook and say, you want to say good vibes only, or you want to say good vibes and only at the bottom. So these are the things that I want you to think about when composing. This is part of your, I think this is the only time where I do a lot of, not a lot of thinking, but I still try to be mindful just because of the spacing. You know, you created this beautiful background, then in the end, you're kind of like, oh, oh, I don't have space for, you know, for my I don't have space now for my third word because he didn't think about the composition. So really you, what you want to do is be mindful of the composition of your letters, how big you want to want to write your letters, make sure that you have enough space for both and also the position in your, um, in your area. Now you don't have to put it in the whole page. Maybe you want just this part right here and say good vibes only right here. And then we can add more, um, little drawings in here like circles and perfect circles i love to add diamonds i love to add stars and those are just little things to add visual interest in our page so all right i want you to think about that um and then we're going to do our lettering together um but if you want to for example if you want to do a brush lettering, I love to do brush lettering because they are super pretty and it also doesn't take a whole lot of time filling in spaces in there. Um, you can just, you know, put in good vibes only and you're done. But when you're doing like a little bit of different creative lettering, for example, balloon style or like an, a block alpha, that means there's a lot of filling in, in in the areas inside. But choose your type of lettering that you want to use today. I think I'm going to stick with what I showed you in a sample, kind of like a balloon style with my big brush pen. It's going to be easier. Okay. So we're going to do this. Um, I think I want to focus on my bottom right. So I want the good times here. And let me see if my pencil is going to allow me to write on top of the gelatos. I'm using a 2B in here. I want to say good. And I think I want to follow the curve. So even if it's not writing very well, at least I can see it where I laid it down. Now, good. You might not see it, but I can see it. So good. And then vibes going down. And then the word only here. Now, what I taught you earlier regarding the letters, you can do that. Or the easiest way also is we can just keep adding width to our letter. If you want more width, then you can just add strokes with the markers. And we're gonna do that so that we don't run out of time. So I'm gonna do good. So you can choose to do a print or a script. I am going to choose print today. <clears throat> Good. And then I'm gonna fix some of the letters here later. 
and I'll add some width to them. All right, I'm gonna go let this one dry so that I don't smudge anything. I can still see a little bit of that ink. All right, so when you allow that to dry, because I know I'm gonna put my hands in here and I always, always do this, I end up, oh my gosh, smudging everything, you know? So yes, definitely you can use um, a different type of marker. Uh, you can do a cursive for sure, yeah. Yes, and where you can do extra designs in here. Now I'm gonna start adding some width to my um, letters. And this is just by adding a stroke on the side of each letter. You know, you can change the width and the shape and the size by just adding extra strokes here and there. At least doing this, I know exactly my spacing. And so I know that this one, I feel like I can add some width to the stroke. So we're just gonna add, keep adding like that. And here, this one too. You can add like, you know, the rainbow vibes is giving me like the 80s vibes. You know, some kids here might not, what is the 80s vibes? But <laughs> you can add like some doodles in here, you know, like a sneakers, um, you know, maybe some clouds. I don't know, some something fun. You can add like elements in here to fill in your page. You can add in like positive words as well. I think those are cool, like words, cool, you be kind, or like a peace sign. You know, I think that's the kind of vibes that um, I'm getting here. Look at my spacing between my O and my D. That's not making me happy. <laughs> there you go. So I'm just going to add a little bit more width in here. And I feel like I want, I don't want any sharp. So I'm going to fill this in and make it really round in the inside of my letter G like that. And the same goes for my letter O's. I can fill in the inside. So this is how I do like a creative exercises when I'm doing some lettering. It's like, okay, um, I really want like a small, just a small circle inside my letters. And you can just keep adding strokes. Look at this. We can just keep going for my letter D as well to match my letter G right there. I'm just going to go make it smaller and smaller like that. So I feel like really this is bothering me a little bit. <laughs> I'm just going to keep add more air on that side. And this one to kind of match the whole thing. So go little steps at a time so that you don't end up like, oh, no, I shouldn't have done it. So when you're adding just a little bit at a time, you can see, you know, the change as you go along like that. So this one, I feel like I want to add more width to that. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Ragu is right. You can put in um, your name. You know, you can do this for your like name tags, nameplate, you can use this to customize your like notebooks or your journals. You can make some cards. I think that would be really fun creating this background color. And you've seen how easy we've done the background. That was super fun. I'm gonna match the whole circle vibe with my letter in here. So I'll just keep adding some strokes and making it thick and wide like this. 
Now it's spongy, matchy, matchy. There, I'm almost done with mine. Now I'm thinking in my head, what kind of other element do I want to add in here to make this page even more fun and interesting? So I'm thinking, I want to add my little diamonds that I like to use also. Uh, I love it. So for the little diamonds, just because it's much smaller, I'm going to use my brush, um, the smaller brush pit artist in here. And the way I like to do my diamonds is I like to start with the plus sign like this. And then I just keep doing this. Then I'll fill in this shape. And then you can add more points if you want to and all that. But that's the easy way to do that diamond. All right, then I'll start here too. I'll add my plus sign. See, like this, I have like a wider in this area. So I kind of like keep adjusting as I go. And sometimes it gets bigger and bigger. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I wasn't planning on making it super big. But I also like to add some circles like this, some dots. So I think it's a fun way to kind of like fill in an area and simple, very simple, but super effective. If you have the 1.5 um, tip of the pit artist, I think it's nice to use those for like little things like this because you get a much better control instead of using a brush pen. But I'm just so used to using a brush pen. But if you're, you find using a brush pen a little tricky, then we have the 1.5 and we have other tips also. We have the fine, we have medium, we have super fine and extra super fine. We have some chiseled, soft chiseled. So there's like many, many options there. I love it. I feel like I wanna add something in here. Maybe you can add like a smiley face in here. Also, you can definitely do that, but I'm gonna add one more diamond in here. You can choose another quote if you don't like the good vibes only. Why do I make the right side a little wider every single time? Add more point there, more point there. But I love it. I want to add one more here. So what did you end up doing? Did you write your name? Did you write a different quote? Did you draw? That. All right. And so this is what we created today. Some good vibes only. That was super duper fun. Do you have any other questions for me? I feel like um, I can add like a journaling page in here just to kind of like write down my thoughts about this day. You know, um, it's nice to fill in some areas right here. You can put in, you know, today I went to blah, 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 or today I taught a class and 
um, it was it went very well. So you can add your um, a little bit of journaling in here, but that's always fun, fun stuff. But now I think what we've learned, the most important thing is that we've really learned how to blend with the gelatos and we've learned, you know, the different effects that you can get by just using different ways of blending it. I love it. Good vibes only. I love it, Amy. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing. Oh my gosh. All right. So let me switch over to the, hold on one second. So um, again, we want to thank Faber Castell USA for providing this um, class and Michael stores, of course. Thank you. And I would like to um, everybody to follow along, follow us on social media, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whichever social account that you have, show some love to Faber Castell. Um, and then also please do send some love to Michaels as well. Follow us on social media. And um, I am Mommy Lay online. If you have any questions, if there are any things that I might have missed, questions I might have missed, you can always reach out to me on Instagram or on Facebook. I'm more than happy to be a part of your creative journey. Um, it, it always makes me super happy. But yes, this is what we created. I hope you had fun. I did have lots of fun. It was fabulous. But before I leave you guys, we want to invite everybody for next week's class. This is on next Wednesday. Um, we're going to create some cute kawaii popsicles like this. We'll be using some Faber-Castell Albert Durer watercolor markers. So um, if you have the gelatos, then you can use the gelatos in here. But the techniques are going to be a little different. Um, if you have the Faber-Castell uh, gold faber aqua pencils those are going to work the albert durer pencils are going to work as well so but we're going to create some fun 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 kawaii popsicles because summer is here i love some sweets whether it's winter fall summer spring <laughs> but popsicles make me happy and so we hope that you'll be able to join us next week but thank you guys so much for joining us today. Again, we appreciate all of you for spending some creative time with us. Until next time, stay creative and stay happy. Be well, everyone. Thank you.